We have had some really fun weather so far this winter. We are only in the middle of January and already we have had two pretty big snows. Weather can definitely be unpredictable. We have people called meteorologists who try to predict the weather and share their predictions with us. When you think about it, knowing the weather impacts so much of our day. What we can and cannot do, what we should wear, where we should go, and so much more. Meteorologists try hard to forecast the weather accurately, but sometimes it's simply unpredictable. Atmospheric conditions are always changing. That's one reason I really treasure God's Word. It never changes. I want to share a Bible story with you today. It actually includes a detail about a weather phenomenon called a drought or period of unusually low rainfall. Let's see what was going on. It's clear that only God controls the weather. Have you ever tried to make it rain? We can't start or stop the rain. We're not God. And that leads us directly to our big picture question and answer. We will think about this question and answer as we learn about our Bible story. How many gods are there? The answer is, there is one true God who alone deserves worship. That may seem obvious, but as you'll see today, many people did not believe this. When we read the Bible, we need to know about the things that happen before the story to understand why things are happening in the story. Let's talk about how we got to where we are now. God's people, Israel, were divided into two kingdoms because they did not obey God's commands. Today's story is about Elijah, a prophet of God to the northern kingdom of Israel. God had a message for Elijah to share with the king. Elijah the prophet spoke to Ahab, mm -hmm. the evil king of Israel, and gave him a message. There will be no dew or rain for the next few years unless I command it. This will certainly happen. Oh no! Then God told Elijah to go to a place near a stream. God said the ravens would provide food for Elijah to eat. So Elijah obeyed God. The ravens brought him bread and meat, and he drank water from the stream. After a while, the stream dried up because there was no rain in the land. Then God told Elijah to go to a small village. God said a widow in the town would provide for Elijah. So Elijah obeyed God. When Elijah got to the gate of the city, he saw a widow gathering wood. He called to her, please bring me a little water so I can drink. As she went to get it, he added, please bring me a piece of bread too. But the woman told Elijah, I don't have bread. I only have a little bit of flour and oil. The woman and her son were planning to eat one more meal before they died from hunger. Don't be afraid, Elijah said. Go and prepare the meal, but first bring me a small loaf of bread. Then make some for yourself and your son. God says you will not run out of flour or oil until rain comes again. So the woman prepared the meal. She, Elijah, and everyone in her household had enough to eat, and she did not run out of flour or oil, just like the Lord had said. Sometime later, the woman's son got sick and he stopped breathing. Elijah took the boy upstairs and laid him on the bed. He cried out to God, stretched himself out over the boy three times, and cried out to God again. Lord, my God, please let this boy live again, Elijah prayed. The Lord listened to Elijah and the boy's life came into him again. He was alive. Elijah led the boy to his mother. She said to Elijah, 
Now I know you are a man of God, and the Lord really does speak through you. God miraculously provided through Elijah to give food to the widow and life to the widow's son. Many years later, God miraculously provided through his own son, Jesus. Jesus is greater than Elijah. In Jesus, God provides salvation and life to everyone who trusts in him. During a drought, no rain means no water to drink for people or animals and no water to grow crops. No rain means no food, especially for someone like the widow who likely didn't have money to buy food brought in from other countries. This was a very scary time. The widow explained to Elijah that she was preparing her last meal before she expected to die. But God had a special plan for her that would bring him glory. Through her willingness to obey Elijah's words and sacrifice part of her last meal for Elijah, God brought blessing beyond what she could ever imagine. God provided in miraculous ways. Throughout the drought, the widow's flour and oil never ran out. And when her son died, God worked through Elijah to bring him back to life. Remember, Elijah and the widow were surrounded by suffering because the people did not obey God's commands. But Elijah, the widow, and her son experienced God's blessings. They were willing to obey. Don't you think people around them probably noticed a difference at their home? They were able to answer this question for all their neighbors. How many gods are there? There is one true God who alone deserves worship. Their very lives gave glory to God. Our obedience brings him glory as well. Like we just heard, Elijah believed God's words and obeyed. Elijah's miracles proved that he was a prophet of the one true God. Jesus, however, is even greater than Elijah. Jesus' miracles proved that he is God the Son. All of God's promises come true in Jesus. We can trust that Jesus loves us and has a plan to use our lives to point other people to him so they can know his love too. We read a about a lot of miracles in the Bible. But does God still perform miracles today? Pastor Brian talks about that in our Questions from Kids video. Let's listen and see what he has to say. Hey there, I'm Pastor Brian and it's time for Questions from Kids. Today, Evelyn from Denver, Colorado asks, I have a friend who said he'd believe in God if God would do a miracle, like immediately heal a sick family member, does God still do miracles today? Evelyn, that is a great question, and it makes total sense. You know, if we think about what would it be like if God performed these amazing miracles around us, wouldn't people just believe in Him and trust in Jesus? Wouldn't that make it so much easier for us to tell people about Christ? You know, in today's Bible story, we saw God perform miracles, and it drew people to Him. So why doesn't He seem to do that the same way today as he did then. Well, the first thing we have to understand is this. When you read the Bible, the Old Testament and the New, you see God perform miracles, you see Jesus perform miracles, you see the early church leaders perform miracles. And some people did trust in Jesus, some people believe, but many did not. So miracles themselves don't cause people to believe in God. It's gotta be more than that. It's gotta be the gospel itself, what people hear and trust in, as God leads their hearts to be changed and trust in Christ. And so today, we don't need miracles. I would argue we have something better. We have the Bible, we have God's word, and we have everything that God did. We can tell people about the miracles he did that we read about in scripture. We can tell them about Jesus and his earthly ministry. We can walk through these great, powerful stories, and we can point people to how great God is so they can trust in Jesus through the Bible, not through a miracle. 
So here's my question back for you. What can you do to help your friends believe the greatest miracle that we can have salvation through Jesus? God does still do miracles today. Some may not be as easy to see right away. Sometimes you have to look for them. But I have known at least one person who had cancer and then it just disappeared. But God doesn't always do things the way we think that he should. So when we don't get a miracle that we have asked for, it doesn't mean that we should not believe in God. We can know that everything that God does is for his glory and our good. And God always knows what is best for us. Today, we have the Bible to tell everyone about all of the miracles that God and Jesus did. That was something they didn't have back then. And when I look at you, I see a miracle. God created you as a one in a million masterpiece. There is no one else that is just like you. You were created with a plan and a purpose. We have the miracle of the plan of salvation that we can share with others. Even though we deserve death, God sent his son, Jesus, to take our punishment so we can spend eternity with him. How can you share that miracle with your friends and family this week? A new year and time for a new key passage. Will you say it with me? I am the Lord, that is my name, and I will not give my glory to another or my praise to idols. Isaiah 42, 8. Though you may not realize it at first, our key passage reminds us how much God loves us. He knows that idols aren't real and can do nothing for us. He wants us to praise him alone because only he loves us perfectly and provides everything we need. First Chronicles chapter 29, verses 12 and 13 says, Riches and honor come from you, and you are the ruler of everything. Power and might are in your hand. And it is in your hand to make great and give strength to all. Now, therefore, our God, we give you thanks and praise your glorious name. In today's story, God provided in miraculous ways. Everything we have comes from God, from riches and honor to greatness and strength. Let's give him thanks and praise his name this week and always. Thanks for joining me this week. God's not done doing miracles with Elijah. Wait until you hear what he did next. Come back next week to find out. Until then, stay safe and warm and know how much I love and miss you. Have a spectacular week.